The chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan and the Taliban's victory there has left many questions about whether Americans are actually safer now. Until a few days ago, U.S. Ambassador Zalmay Khalilzad was the Biden administration's top envoy negotiating directly with the Taliban. He brokered the Trump era deal with the Taliban in which the U.S. promised to withdraw all U.S. forces. And he joins us now for his first television interview. Welcome to the program. It's great to be with you, Margaret. You have spent more time with the Taliban than any American. Mm -hmm. You were intimately involved with this negotiation. Mm -hmm. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, said this was a strategic failure, the end mm -hmm. of America's longest war. He said the enemy is now in charge in Kabul. Do you share that view? Well, I think uh, there is a lot of anger and a lot of resentment about what has happened uh, there. I think we uh, went to Afghanistan uh, to uh, uh, make sure uh, that those who had participated in, in the 9-11 uh, attack were brought to justice and that Al-Qaeda would never be able to use Afghanistan or any other terrorist group to attack uh, the United States again. I think uh, with regard to terrorism, we largely have achieved our objective. Uh, on the issue of building a democratic Afghanistan, uh, uh, I think the, that uh, did not succeed. The struggle goes on uh, and uh, it would have to be carried on by the Afghans themselves. We transform Afghanistan. Uh, I think millions uh, of Afghans now are educated, cell phones, uh, the Taliban are going to have a hard time putting them back uh, in the box the way they had put people in the uh, in 1990s. But we, we, we did not achieve uh, 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 the second objective of the transformation, uh, an enduring transformation of Afghanistan into a democratic uh, uh, allied uh, nation state. Mm -hmm. The enemy is in charge of Kabul. Is that how you view the Taliban government now? Well, the, we fought the Taliban obviously for 20 years. They're, uh, they're not uh, our allies or partners. Uh, so there is a, a mistrust and distrust. Um, uh, but uh, uh, we would have obviously preferred a different outcome, a negotiated outcome in which uh, the people who supported the republic, meaning the government, uh, since uh, we went into Afghanistan, sharing power with, uh, with the Talibs. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Talibs are a reality of Afghanistan. Uh, we did not defeat them. In fact, they were making progress uh, yeah. on the battlefield, even as we were negotiating with them. And the reason we negotiated with them was because uh, the militarily things were not going as well as we would have liked. We were losing ground each year. They were winning uh, the war. Uh, uh, slowly, but uh, uh, making progress. And for us to reverse the progress that they were making uh, was going to require a lot more efforts, and we tried it a couple of times to increase the effort, but uh, not making progress uh, against them. Uh, so we thought uh, it's better to get a negotiated settlement. Uh, negotiation was a mm -hmm. result of, based on the judgment, that uh, uh, we weren't winning the war, and therefore uh, uh, time was not on our side and better to make a deal sooner than right. later, and that's what we did. And that was the conclusion of President Obama, President Trump, President Biden. And I'm going to get into the details of the, of the deal, but I want to ask you a little bit about what's happening now since you've been the main conduit to the Taliban. Since the government's fall, you've been trying to get Americans out. How many Americans remain in Afghanistan today? Uh, we aren't sure. Uh, the, the, the frank answer is because not every American, uh, uh, some of them are Afghan Americans who, uh, who have families there, who, have, uh, who live there. Uh, they, uh, but it's uh, hundreds, uh, isn't it? Uh, I, I think uh, it's very likely that it'll be uh, uh, in hundreds, but uh, we don't know. The truth of the matter is we don't know. We have uh, tried to, uh, when I was in government, reach out through various means, phone calls, emails, uh, the embassy uh, statements publicly to, uh, to get in touch. Uh, and uh, and uh, many uh, had not, and then later some did. Some were ambivalent about going uh, or staying. Some wanted to bring 65 members of their families who were not Americans with them. If they couldn't bring all of them, they were not willing to leave themselves. So lots of uh, issues, but I can tell you that a lot of good people uh, worked very hard uh, to bring as many 
uh, American, all Americans, if they wanted to leave uh, in our system, uh, of, uh, fortunately, we can't coerce American citizens to, to leave, so they have to make a decision. And, 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 but there, I, I, my judgment is there could be still uh, hundreds of Americans there. Hundreds. And the Pentagon, there. the Pentagon has acknowledged there are also U.S. trained commandos. Right. Afghan commandos who were left right. behind, people who right. fought alongside Americans for right. years, sure. along with interpreters who are still sure. trying to get out. How many of them are left and do we bear moral responsibility to get them out? Well, we have to, uh, first of all, recognize they didn't fight for us. They fought for the, their country. And sometimes we self-flagellate a little uh, uh, that uh, what happened in Afghanistan was, was largely our effort. Afghans are divided. Some of them believe in, uh, uh, in a republic, uh, more Western-style government. Uh, these are mostly urban Afghans. But then there are other Afghans who support a more Islamic government, uh, like right. the Taliban uh, group. But these and were trained allied forces, many of whom want to get out now. Well, do we do bear want to get out. Uh, we should uh, obviously help them. We have brought, uh, I can say, thousands of uh, Afghans who, who helped us and their family members and uh, uh, this process uh, will continue. I've got the Talibs to agree to make a statement on national television in Afghanistan that any Afghan who has worked with the United States uh, wants to leave, they will not make uh, uh, any uh, uh, problems or create obstacles on their way to depart Afghanistan. Because there are reports they're being hunted down and many are in hiding. Uh, well, uh, I see these reports, and sometimes we, uh, when I was in government, I, I looked into uh, those reports and found that they, uh, they were not necessarily always accurate. And that uh, there have been people who have also acted as Talibs, who have uh, uh, taken revenge for some personal or uh, something that the person had done against what they regard to have been unfair to them. But uh, we are keeping the pressure, and we should continue to keep the pressure on the Talibs to honor the commitments that they have made. Who does that? CIA or the State Department? Who? Well, the pressure comes from the whole of government, uh, uh, with the State Department in the lead, uh, although in our last engagement with the Talibs, uh, the deputy director of the CIA led our uh, discussions uh, with them, but uh, we uh, uh, diplomatic channel is uh, very much uh, in the lead. We have a, uh, an embassy uh, uh, sort of in Doha, and the, the charge meets regularly mm -hmm. uh, with the Taliban. The UN has given some pretty dire projections of what's happening inside Afghanistan right now. More than a million children could die of malnutrition in the next year. Yeah. The Taliban has still not allowed girls age 12 and older to return to school. They may say something, but they're not doing it. There are videos of women being beaten in the streets to just demonstrating for their rights. I mean, isn't this proof that the Taliban has no intention of becoming a democratic government or any kind of government that protects human rights? Well, uh, th there's no question that uh, uh, the Taliban have a different vision for Afghanistan. It's a vision of a more Islamic government uh, uh, than existed before, and there is obviously disputes about the interpretation uh, of uh, Islam. Little girls going to school? Well, I think there is a disagreement uh, inside the Taliban. That's why I think that uh, uh, we can't say all Talibs behave in the same way. There are factions inside it. Right now, for example, in uh, at least three or four provinces, uh, and high schools uh, for uh, girls have been opened. And they say the same will happen uh, as far as the rest of the country is concerned. And uh, we should hold them uh, to that, keep pressure on them. They want uh, um, assistance, they want uh, normalcy in relations, they want their uh, monies of Afghanistan and the U.S. banks to be... Uh, unfrozen. Should uh, it have, be? Uh, we, I think uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, do so without a clear understanding of what they will do in exchange for which what steps we are willing to take. And there has to be a time uh, uh, in that agreement. Uh, there has to be kind of a roadmap as to when they will do what and, and, and in response to that, what it is that we will do. I think that, that task is ahead of us. 
But don't you think it's it's a bit of a fantasy to say that the Taliban will do all of those things you just laid out? Aren't they proving themselves to not be capable of that? Well, uh, I, I think that the, uh, my judgment is uh, that the Taliban is, uh, are not the same Taliban uh, of the 1990s, uh, but uh, that's mostly true of some, especially those who we negotiated with, they're more worldly. But there are other factions uh, where some commanders were, were less exposed to the world, uh, and uh, they are more hardline. And it is in that struggle uh, that uh, the future of Afghanistan will be decided. If they don't, uh, Taliban don't move toward more inclusiveness, respecting the rights of the uh, Afghan people, the, and, and then honoring their commitment to us on terrorism, there will be no uh, move towards normalcy, and there shouldn't be. There should be no uh, release of funds uh, uh, so that economy uh, could collapse. And in that collapse, uh, there, uh, uh, there a new civil war mm -hmm. uh, uh, could start. So the Talibs have some difficult, uh, important choices to make. And I think they are debating that themselves. I believe the best approach is uh, to engage uh, with them uh, with clear uh, uh, list of what it is that we want in exchange for what they would like to see, whether we can do all of them or some of them, there has to be a step-by-step -step agreement and, uh, 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 and a roadmap that both sides agree to. It's a bit of a euphemism to say some hardline individuals are in that government. I mean, right. the Minister of the Interior has a $10 million bounty on his head because he's a U.S. designated terrorist. A yeah. member of the Haqqani network. Absolutely. Uh, Direct uh, ties to Al-Qaeda. Uh, absolutely. And therefore, for us to do anything, uh, that issue has to be dealt with to our satisfaction. Haqqani is breaking uh, uh, to our satisfaction from Al-Qaeda has to be uh, a precondition, a condition for uh, uh, progress on the agenda that they have, including uh, the issue of and freezing the, uh, the, so, the, so the you, bank accounts. That you acknowledge have, yeah. that the Taliban has not cut ties with Al Qaeda? Uh, the, the Taliban have agreed not to allow Al Qaeda uh, or any other terrorist group, which was a big success for them to mention Al Qaeda twice in the agreement. Uh, the, the agreement you negotiated back in 2020. Uh, to, right. Uh, to uh, plot and plan uh, from the territories they controlled, or now that they control Afghanistan, from Afghanistan against the United States and our allies. That was what we wanted from them. That's but, what they said on paper, but yeah, Chairman but, Milley, Milley says they did not live up to that. Uh, well, they, they have lived up, we're convinced that they are not allowing, they are not allowing plotting and planning mm. uh, operations by Al-Qaeda against the United States. We always would like to see more uh, from uh, uh, the Taliban, uh, from almost any country that we deal with on this issue, we would like them uh, to do more. We would like to expel, uh, to, uh, to get them to expel uh, any Al-Qaeda member who is there. Although they do argue that some um, of these people have been there for decades because during the Soviet period it is that they had come to Afghanistan. Some have married Afghans that have children and grandchildren mm -hmm. there. But nevertheless, we should press them to do more uh, on the issue of terrorism. Do they know where the leader of Al-Qaeda is? The UN says he's living in Afghanistan. Well, uh, the report that I have seen uh, uh, indicate he could be in Afghanistan or uh, adjacent territories. Uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri. Uh, Al-Zawahiri. I don't know whether uh, the, the Taliban know it. Uh, uh, the, the Taliban that I dealt with, uh, uh, they told me they did not know where he was. Do you believe that? Well, I didn't, I, um, we, there is a, as I said before, a lack of trust between us and them. That's why it's very important not to take their word for, uh, uh, in terms of what they say or what they commit to. That's why we are saying there has to be uh, over the horizon monitoring uh, of the uh, commitments on terrorism and the ability to strike uh, if we see plotting and planning going on. Let's talk about the deal you negotiated. Yes. Why did you resign? Oh, uh, I was asked uh, uh, by the former president to uh, negotiate uh, our withdrawal from Afghanistan and get commitments from the Talibs on the terrorism front. Uh, uh, that has been achieved. Uh, we are out. Uh, our longest war uh, is over. Now we're in a new phase. Uh, uh, 
dealing with br evacuation issues and uh, the humanitarian issues, which uh, I think uh, the United States, the American people are very generous providing humanitarian assistance. Uh, I thought that the, uh, the, it was the, given the new phase, it was time to move on. And uh, 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 we have also adjusted kind of uh, how we will do Afghanistan moving forward. So it was, uh, it was the time uh, for me to, to move on as well. Mm -hmm. You said this was a job to negotiate the U.S. withdrawal. Yes. In the past, you've said something about this also being a peace deal. Yes. Was it really just about not shooting Americans on their way out the door? Is well, that what this assignment in, was? In fact, we negotiated a condition-based uh, comprehensive agreement that had four elements. Uh, terrorism commitment from the Talibs, which was a fundamental, timetable for U.S. withdrawal, inter-Afghan negotiations, uh, and an agreement on a new uh, government and a comprehensive permanent ceasefire. And this was a package. Um, uh, and uh, the, the U.S. withdrawal was the most important for us uh, because uh, uh, Afghanistan was uh, being very expensive. Uh, you know, it costed almost 40 billion a year. And the world had changed uh, since uh, 2001. Uh, resources were needed f for uh, other key issues like how do you deal with China, uh, the technological right. race, the geopolitical competition with them, and sometimes even domestic issues. So for us, uh, terrorism and withdrawal was the most Im uh, important, but we wanted to also do the right thing for the Afghans and, and, and uh, we put those two others uh, conditions also as part of the agreement. Well, the agreement itself is what I want to talk to you about because when you talk uh, to, as I have, uh, former Afghan officials, or right. when you listen to General Milley or General McKenzie testify on Capitol Hill, they go all the way back to that 2020 deal you negotiated. Right. And they say that was the moment. Right. That was the moment when America signed this deal that it was incredibly demoralizing to Afghan forces. Right. So when. President Biden says they just melted away. They say it was that deal right. you brokered that did that. Well, I, I say to that uh, a couple of things. Uh, one is that the reason uh, we uh, uh, moved towards that deal, that uh, President Obama wanted to do it, President uh, Trump did it, and President Biden continued with it, is because militarily uh, we were not making progress. We were not winning the war, number one. So the, the question was, do we do what we were doing, losing ground for many more years uh, without uh, winning, or do we uh, seek an alternative? And two, uh, one of the big questions we have to ask ourselves, uh, why the Afghan army did not fight? Did they not believe in the cause themselves? They fought for 20 years. What be, while we were there, after I were withdrawn, did they, uh, were they just fighting for us? Uh, or were they fighting for a cause? Did the Talibs have a belief in what they were doing and the government forces did not? Was it because of the corruption uh, of the regime that we uh, had helped, that they had lost confidence in that regime? That the government did not treat the soldiers right, paying their salaries, looking after the, uh, the families of those who lost their lives. Uh, uh, this has to be one of the key issues. Why is mm -hmm. it? Uh, I think it's too uh, uh, simple and uh, not altogether right unless we think this army fought only because uh, of the U.S. Uh, to say that the agreement was responsible for why they didn't fight and they disintegrated. I believe there were many more reasons, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think uh, the Pentagon, I'm sure, is looking at this. Yes. And we, we need to be looking uh, at this issue closely because we spent a lot of effort yes. and a lot of time. And uh, why was it that at the end uh, uh, they disintegrated? I think there would be domestic factors of Afghanistan uh, as well. Uh, as well as the way how we build this force, it needs to be looked at. Uh, and, and we hear promises from the administration, they're gonna do a hot wash of all of this. Right. But on that point, right. don't you see some legitimacy to the argument that when the most powerful country in the world right. legitimizes the Taliban, sits down with them, says we will sign this agreement alongside you, that the message sent to every governor, to every soldier, writings on the wall, 
right. Taliban's coming back I, to power I can no tell you what. that, uh, that uh, the Afghan people overwhelmingly uh, w wanted a peace agreement. They were tired of this war, especially they didn't see it going in the right direction. And uh, the agreement said uh, that there would be negotiations between the government right. and the Talibs. So they opened the door for a peaceful settlement. But, but you did not include the Afghan government in the deal between the U.S. and Taliban. That was a later step that you promised to, to include them. Nope. But for the deal you brokered, H.R. Right. McMaster, right. retired general, former right. national security advisor to President Trump, said, said you, you brokered a surrender deal. How do you respond to that? Well, uh, first of all, uh, on the same day uh, that we signed the deal with the Talibs, we had a joint uh, announcement with the NATO Secretary General in Kabul, uh, endorsing that agreement and the continuation of our support. While we signed the agreement, we continued to uh, to support the Afghan armed forces. Mm -hmm. In fact, that deal allowed us something that has not gotten much attention, that while the Talibs agreed not to attack us after the deal was signed, they allowed us, they agreed that we could come to the defense of the Afghan forces if they were attacked and for because they were attacking the Afghan forces and so, that we And we backed. came to the defense of the Afghan forces. We, they allowed us, we could kill Talibs during the withdrawal period, but they couldn't attack us. Second is the reason for the deal, I mean, to my friend General McMaster and others, is because we weren't winning the war. Mm -hmm. How long did General McMaster think we should continue while losing ground each year. Why, why, did, uh, why was that the case after 20 years? That uh, with so much investment, so much loss of life, that we were losing ground uh, to the Talibs, and w the alternative was either a negotiated settlement or more of the same. And uh, people way above my pay grade decided more of the same is not acceptable anymore. We needed to- uh, uh, Above your pay grade, you're talking about Secretary of State Pompeo, or you're talking about President Trump? both and uh, in, in the current administration too. Uh, they were deliberated on and the decision was what it was. Uh, sometimes people think that uh, I must have, as if I had uh, all the authority for decision making. Uh, what, <laughs> we know that is obviously not true, but I, I can, I having, having participated uh, with uh, several presidents, I, I can assure you that there is a lot of deliberation and uh, given the alternatives uh, available, a choice was made. Because the American public had lost the will to fight. And, and the fight wasn't going right. Mm -hmm. The fight was not going right after 20 years. So it, I want to go through some of the specifics with you. Yes, please. Because you were the practitioner here, right? right? So one of the chief criticisms of you is you gave up too much and you got too little. Right. I know you're saying you were just the guy no, carrying no, I, out I, what the president I, I, I could take criticism, uh, 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 no, no issue there, I'm sure there is always alternatives, uh, yes. Um, but on the specific point of one of the things in the deal, yes. why did the Trump administration agree to the Taliban's demand that 5,000 prisoners be released? Right. 5,000 prisoners right. who could very easily end up right on that battlefield. Right. Well, Why did you do that before peace talks? Uh, the, uh, the Taliban, uh, in order to sit with the government to negotiate, wanted some confidence build, uh, building measures from both sides. Uh, their demand was all prisoners be released by both sides uh, as a goodwill gesture as they were going to sit together at the table to, uh, to negotiate peace. What uh, do they need potential fighters for if they're negotiating yeah. peace. Well, but they were giving up the fighters also because it was an exchange of prisoners, not a release, one-sided release. The government had over 15,000 or so prisoners, uh, the government of Afghanistan, uh, Talib. And the Talibs had 1,000 prisoners. The Talib uh, said uh, uh, that uh, uh, they would release all of theirs, but they want all of the uh, uh, prisoners that the government had. The government ultimately going back and forth we agreed as a confidence building measure uh, to start inter-Afghan negotiations, uh, um, 5,000 for 1,000. And there wasn't any shortage of fighters one, uh, on either side, 300,000 on one side, 70,000 uh, on the other side or more maybe or less. So it wasn't, uh, and they made a commitment that these people, freed prisoners by both sides would not go back to the battlefield. Was that lived up to? 
I think it, in, in, in the majority of cases, in the overwhelming majority of cases, our judgment is yes. Although there were some instances, and the Talibs uh, attributed that, that those people who went back were the ones that the government, after releasing them, were hunting them. Now, that I, I would say that the Taliban, uh, uh, some of the uh, soldiers that were released, or some of their fighters that were released, mm -hmm. did go back into the battle. So, but you can understand if you're sitting in Kabul in the U.S. allied elected government of Afghanistan and you're saying the fate of my country is being decided without me at the table and the enemy is having thousands of prisoners released, I'm being sold down the river here. No, the question was that uh, what we did in fact was the opposite, which is they were fighting each other and losing ground, the government was losing ground. Mm -hmm. And what we did is, as a result of this agreement, we uh, uh, started direct for the first time in 40 years of Afghan history of war, recent war, to talk to each other, to sit across the table, to negotiate with each other. That, that took a long time to happen, and those negotiations didn't go anywhere. Well, that is a different uh, question. Why didn't the negotiation go anywhere? Is it, uh, did the government uh, uh, play a role in the, slow rolling of the negotiations? Did the government embrace those negotiations? Uh, right. Did it uh, uh, campaign against uh, the peace process? Of course, ideally, I can understand for the government uh, to have wanted to be the one to negotiate everything with the Taliban, mm -hmm. including the US forces. But uh, that's what we tried for uh, 18 years or 16 years to say uh, for the Talibs, sit with the government and negotiate. They said first they need to reach an understanding with the U.S., then they will sit with the, with the Afghans, right. and, and, and that's what we did at well, the end. Well, that's what the Taliban demanded. That's what they but, demanded, yes. But for the United States to agree to that, yes. well, but the, don't but, you understand how it poisoned the waters or, with President Ghani and his government that they wouldn't trust what was about to happen? Well, well the, the question is, uh, again, I would come back to what's the, what choices did the government uh, or us face? Do we want to go uh, to, uh, to continue the war? Or uh, come, having come to a judgment that we were not succeeding, mm -hmm. uh, we were not winning the war, that we should seek a political settlement. And we, in that political settlement, as I said, we had four elements, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which included negotiations with the government and a comprehensive permanent ceasefire as part of the agreement. Then. Uh, of course, some of the, uh, our leaders here were s uh, skeptical about uh, making the withdrawal of the United States forces contingent on a political agreement and a right. comprehensive ceasefire because the, uh, the belief was that we uh, very well will get stuck there because the Afghan government might not want to uh, make mm -hmm. a deal the Talibs might not want to make a deal or the two may not come to an agreement. So th the, at the end, we decided not to, do, uh, to, to, to go ahead with a condition-based approach, right. but rather to do a calendar withdrawal. But essentially- But what that's not in the agreement. I mean, the difference between uh, what was in the agreement and what we did was in right. the agreement was a condition-based package, but ultimately the decision was uh, to, uh, to do a calendar-based withdrawal. Right. The conditions went out the door. I mean, Chairman Milley has, has said that right. the Taliban didn't live up to this deal. No, I mean, and our approach. The, under our the Biden approach, administration, they said no longer conditions based. We're just out. You're saying. Because of pessimism about uh, the pessimism about uh, whether the Afghans could uh, uh, reach an agreement that it may take much longer. And if the Afghans don't reach an agreement and we don't honor the timetable for withdrawal, mm -hmm. we could be back at war with the Taliban. But, and there is plenty of criticism and another hour of what happened with the Afghan government itself. Right. But this was an agreement between the United States and the Taliban. Right. With a, a full knowledge and, uh, and, uh, of the Afghan government. Mm -hmm. uh, you were telling them what was happening. Uh, yeah, yes. I was showing them the, the various drafts. Right. They were very pleased with the uh, joint statement that was issued uh, as I said, on the same day, with continuing military support, we came to the defense of their forces when they were attacked. With uh, uh, the uh, Ghani uh, government uh, was begin. not supportive of your work. You know that. I mean, you, you, you well, and President Ghani personally had some bad blood. You, you'd known him for years. Uh, I, I, uh, His uh, office would accused you of trying to run for president of Afghanistan well, yourself yeah. <laughs> at one point. <laughs> 
all of that is true, but there was, uh, uh, there was nothing about me in this regard. I was representing the United States uh, to uh, carry out the president's uh, direction to negotiate a settlement, and the settlement with four elements. Uh, but uh, I believe the biggest difficulty was that President Ghani and a, a few other Afghan leaders uh, did not believe that we were serious about withdrawal for a long time and they liked the status quo compared to a pl uh, political settlement in which they might not have the jobs that they had and, and the resources that the U.S. was providing would not be there. They mm -hmm. preferred the status quo to yeah. a, a political settlement. And uh, then uh, when it became clear that the U.S. was leaving, uh, uh, that then uh, uh, they, they miscalculated the, the, uh, the effects uh, of the continuing war, they were not serious about a political settlement. Yeah. Those are also facts that impacted the situation. But if the United States is promising, essentially, to deliver the Afghan government and to make this deal happen, wasn't it diplomatic malpractice no. for the Secretary of State not to be holding Ghani's hand, walking him through this? Shouldn't Mike Pompeo have been doing that? Shouldn't well, Tony Blinken have been doing that? Both of them spent a lot of time uh, with uh, uh, President Ghani uh, to uh, take the negotiation seriously, to believe uh, that we were... Uh, uh, you don't the fault the actions of either Secretary of State. Oh, I do not, because I believe that both worked extremely hard, extremely hard uh, that uh, to do the right thing for Afghanistan. So obviously, first for us in terms of uh, uh, the directions they received uh, from the president, uh, but also uh, uh, to make sure that the terrorism issue is addressed, to make sure but that the withdrawal the takes United place, States, that we don't go back to a, a, to how, a war. How was more arm twisting not happening then? Uh, if, if all the blame is I, to go I, on the Ghani government. I, I believe myself, if, uh, uh, now that you've asked, that uh, uh, rather than that we pressed the Ghani uh, too much, uh, it's my judgment that we didn't press him hard enough. Mm -hmm. And that we, uh, uh, there were a lot of Afghans who wanted to press Ghani a, a lot. Uh, uh, and. Uh, they were asking uh, uh, whether it would be okay with us to, uh, to press them harder. We did not. We uh, um, uh, were gentle with President Ghani. We uh, used diplomacy. We encouraged him. Once we, uh, um, Secretary Pompeo threatened to cut off a billion dollars uh, if Abdullah and Ghani, look at this situation. They're losing the war in Afghanistan. They have an election. A problematic election, only 1.2 right. million may have participated. Two inauguration, the, imagine uh, a situation yeah. uh, like that. And uh, the, uh, the Secretary Pompeo threatened to cut off 1 billion if they don't come mm -hmm. to an agreement. So if we had uh, told President Ghani early on that there will be uh, uh, no military support for uh, his security forces if he didn't negotiate seriously because he wanted to so stay So the Trump on. administration could have pushed harder? We could have pushed harder. Uh, I believe, we, in retrospect, my judgment is that uh, uh, we could have pressed President Ghani harder.